But first, we have a film report about capital punishment. In 1972, the United States Supreme Court ruled that each state has the right to determine its own capital punishment laws. Florida law states that an adult convicted of murder or the rape of a child under the age of 11 can be sentenced to death. The validity of that law was argued before the Supreme Court this week, and if it's upheld, 66 men on Florida's death row could die in the electric chair. Let me tell you something. How do you think it would feel to sit in that chair yeah. and, have, and have somebody throw juice? There, there has been nobody to survive that chair yeah. to give a description of how it feels. And, I, and I, I've got to tell you, it, it doesn't, I, I would imagine it just doesn't tickle. Charles Prophet is on death row at Florida State Prison in Stark for murdering a Tampa man while burglarizing the man's home. Florida Attorney General Robert Shevin argued before the U.S. Supreme Court this week that the state should be allowed to put Prophet to death. Prophet was convicted by a jury and, as in all capital cases, was granted an appeal of that conviction. Despite that, Prophet insists he is innocent, claiming he did not receive a fair trial because he feels the law discriminates against people who are poor or black. Uh, you go up on that death row right now and you look at their records, find out how, how, how many had PDs and how many had private attorneys. 95% of the men that's on that death row had public defenders. The other 5-5%, no, there was about 2% that had private attorneys and the rest were court-appointed court attorneys. And uh, none of them has any means. You know, none of them. You won't, you won't find any man up there that has means. Of the 66 people on death row, 35 of them happen to be white, and 31 of them happen to be black. So we really have a majority of white people on death row, not 85% black people on death row. Of the 66 people on death row, approximately 50% retained their own lawyer, were not among the very poor, but had sufficient funds to hire their own competent counsel. And about 50% had court-appointed counsel. So definitely the public defenders aren't, aren't experienced enough uh, in, in the courtroom. And in order to get a good attorney to defend you in a case like that, you would have to have a minimum of about $35,000. And who's got $35,000? I'm lucky if I can scrape up a couple of hundred. Considering arguments similar to those presented by Profit in 1972, the Supreme Court in declaring the then existing death penalty law unconstitutional, said it discriminated in a freakish and whimsical manner against certain people, usually the poor and the black. This is not, however, the key argument in evaluating capital punishment's effectiveness in preventing crime. Some of the most heated debate on the subject focuses on the death penalty as a deterrent to brutal crime. Wherever I went, I found district attorneys who could tell you about some horrible crime in which the perpetrator of the crime had spared the victim's life because he feared capital punishment. So I do believe that capital punishment is a deterrent to some people and prevents some people from committing murder. I mean, both penalties deter people from committing crime, but I don't think capital punishment is any greater deterrent than life imprisonment is. Because when I went through death row recently, uh, I was impressed by the fact that uh, one of the inmates told me, uh, uh, I don't want to keep waking up every morning worrying about whether I'm going to go to the electric chair. It's, it's a frightening feeling. It's very disturbing. A lot of mornings you wake up, you don't realize where you're at, you know, and <laughs> you get mad. Uh, sometimes it's very hard to accept that that's what's happening and is uh, happening. Well, if he's concerned about going to the electric chair now in prison, I think he might also have been concerned about it outside before he committed murder had he known that the electric chair was a viable tool that could be used against him. I think, any, I think any, anyone that commits a crime doesn't think they're going to get caught, for one thing. Or, or else they wouldn't commit the crimes. If, if they committed a crime and knew that they were going to get caught for it, I mean, uh, they wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be done. I don't think capital punishment has ever been a deterrent to crime. I, I imagine, though, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people think so, or else we wouldn't be here. But uh, I don't think it has. It's never been proven. There are no conclusive studies in Florida that state without doubt that capital punishment is a deterrent to committing crime. But there are figures that show the number of homicides and murders within given years, and Attorney General Shevin uses these statistics as concrete evidence for advocating the death penalty. For 10 years after 1964, up until 1974, when we really didn't use the death penalty as an effective law enforcement tool, 
the homicide rate, the murder rate, jumped from about seven to 9,000 a year up to more than 21,000 murders a year nationwide. Not all of the pros and cons concerning the debate on capital punishment can be measured statistically. Many people question the morality of taking a person's life, while others seek retribution, an eye for an eye. What must be decided is, in which way is justice best served? There are so many crimes. The assassination of a president, the blowing up of an airliner to collect insurance on, your, on a man's uh, mother's life uh, and killing 37 people in the process. That happened in Colorado. Uh, blowing up buildings by terrorists, kidnapping of children and, and other people uh, for ransom and then killing the victims. There are so many senseless, needless crimes that must be punished by people realizing that if they commit these crimes, they're going to forfeit their own life. And I think that society uh, has a right to demand the death penalty in those situations. In our society today, we, we're, we are so geared to saving life and stuff. We're supposed to be so civilized when just about half the countries in the world that are behind us economically and, and uh, well, society-wise have, have abandoned it. They know it's not a deterrent. My, my strong feeling is that uh, if there is an alternative short of death, which will accomplish the same results, uh, any morally sensitive civilization should choose that alternative. And consequently, I'm against capital punishment for that reason. I don't think it uh, accomplishes any uh, legitimate public objective that could, cannot be accomplished by life imprisonment. An alternative to capital punishment is life in prison. And advocates of this philosophy claim the criminal would no longer be a burden to society, and yet his life would be spared. Well, that argument is usually countered by those believing we're spending too much money on incarcerating those prisoners. As the Florida law now stands, without the death penalty being instituted, a person convicted and sentenced to life must spend at least the minimum 25 years in prison without parole. Many times he's sentenced to life and he's out in seven, eight years. Yes, but uh, for first degree murder and for rape of a child under 11, uh, if you're convicted of those two crimes, which are capital crimes, and are not sentenced to death but sentenced to life, you're not eligible for any parole consideration for 25 years. That's positive. That's, There's no... That's right going back on that. No, that's unlike any other crime. Right. Any other crime, you're eligible immediately. In addition, if you eliminate capital punishment and you provide life imprisonment as the punishment for murder, what is to prevent people who are convicted of first-degree murder, sentenced to life imprisonment, from killing guards or other prison personnel in an attempt to escape since they'll have nothing to lose? They've already received a life sentence. They can only receive another life sentence it's worth the gamble to them to kill someone in an attempt to escape. Uh, if the punishment for rape is, is life imprisonment, the punishment for murder is life imprisonment, if the punishment for robbery is life imprisonment, and the punishment for murder is life imprisonment, then he may very well feel that he may as well kill, eliminate the eyewitnesses, because he stands less chance of ever being caught. Whereas if there is a greater punishment for murder, if he thinks that by committing murder, I'm going to get the electric chair or committing murder uh, in a rape case, I'm going to get the electric chair, whereas otherwise, if I get caught, I'm only going to get life imprisonment. I think it could go a long way towards deterring the rapist and the robber from committing murder. It's just as tragic, or virtually just as tragic, if someone is wrongfully sentenced to life imprisonment who is actually innocent. So uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, one, of the, one of the potential shortcomings of any system of justice, and there's nothing you can can do to have a perfect system. We can't achieve a utopian society. The leading argument against the use of capital punishment is that new evidence which could prove a defendant not guilty will be found and brought before the court at a later time. That's something the electric chair can't wait for. Those arguing this philosophy cite the recent findings in the murder trial of Freddie Pitts and Wilbert Lee. The two men were on Florida's death row until 1972 and then sentenced to life in prison when the Supreme Court struck down the death penalty law that year. But just last September, new evidence was found to clear Pitts and Lee, and they consequently were freed. Let's say the death penalty, the, the death penalty was still in effect when they were on death row and they were still executing people. All right? And then men were sentenced to die, and they died in that electric chair. And all of a sudden, like this, like, uh, last, this year or last year when they, uh, when they finally left, they found out that they didn't do it. There's two men who died and didn't commit the crime. Now, how the hell are you going to tell them families that, look, we're sorry, it was an accident, but it happens? Out of the hundreds of thousands of trials 
in the United States. This rarely happens, plus the appeal rights that are given to persons who are convicted of capital crimes. In addition to that, we supply them with top flight lawyers. If they would kill a man, okay, find out later that he's innocent, and then get the man who really did it, I wonder if they should kill him or not. Because actually that man's responsible for two murders when you come right down to it. I don't know. That's a question I've been pondering in my mind. The Supreme Court has heard both sides of the capital punishment debate. Their decision on whether Florida's death penalty law is constitutional is expected in the early summer. When the Supreme Court struck down its existing death penalty law in 1972, it was by a five to four margin. The swing vote this time could come from Ford appointee to the high court, John Paul Stevens. Just wish I knew more about that man up there, that's up there now, knowing what's going through his mind. Uh, you don't know. It's taken a long time for it to get to this point, you know, but now that it's here, you, you wish it stall a while, you know, just, you know, just stall a while. The court is divided just like the country is, and I think the court reflects in a large part what, what the country's uh, uh, misgivings about the death penalty are, uh, how it's really not a clear-cut moral issue. Attorney General Shevin was correct when he said that half of all Florida's prisoners on death row retain their own lawyers. He himself stood before the Supreme Court this week arguing for the death penalty. The court has not ruled on the legality of capital punishment since 1972. In that year, each individual state was given the option of deciding whether or not to institute the death penalty. Also in 1972, the Florida legislature wrote into its constitution that murder or rape by an adult to a person 11 years or younger was punishable by death in the electric chair. The Supreme Court's decision this summer will determine whether or not Florida's law is valid.